If we pass the other two things I'm trying to get done, we will, in fact, reduce inflation. Reduce inflation. Reduce inflation. Greetings, Internets. This video will be focused on this fresh, hot narrative you may have seen in the media about the inflation we have going on being supposedly the fault of the Ukraine-Russia conflict, and how it's really just another example of silly corporatist state propaganda. And this topic may at first seem slightly more boring than what I normally cover, but trust me, this is important. There will also be a tidbit about Shank's nephew at the end. War generally tends to produce propaganda in droves, and in the modern days of the internet, it tends to spread like wildfire. So, the media in Washington, D.C. are trying to pull off a massive grift, which is this attempt to blame the Ukraine crisis for current and upcoming financial woes to distract us all from the real cause, which is of course their own incompetence and irresponsible spending. Basically, they are gearing up to blame sustained economic failures on the war, when in reality these failures are coming from policy mistakes that are creating the current inflation spike. To better understand this, first off I'll just quickly go over what inflation exactly is, and what exactly causes it. The definition of inflation is a continuing rise in the general price level usually attributed to an increase in the volume of money and credit relative to available goods and services. And this definition is where there are some misconceptions. Just because prices of a few things are rising doesn't necessarily imply inflation. It has to be a general price increase that shows that there is a decreased overall value of the currency. So here are three things generally associated with causing inflation. First, the most common reason is when too much of a currency is in circulation in relation to goods and services. Or according to economists such as Milton Friedman, too much money chasing after too few goods, leading to the money being worth less as currency is just as beholden to the laws of supply and demand as anything else. Second is just time. Inflation will actually happen naturally in a healthy economy. As money velocity or how often money is being exchanged throughout the year rises with GDP, there will be some degree of natural inflation as an economy grows. Third is just pure government incompetence. Irresponsible government spending will lead to inflation as the status love to pay for things by just printing more money. In extreme cases, this can actually lead to hyperinflation, which is what happened in Zimbabwe when Mugabe brilliantly decided to pay for things he couldn't afford by printing higher and higher denominations of his nation nation's currency until, well, um, yeah, yeah, rip. Yeah, that happened. There are also some contributing factors that don't technically meet the definition of inflation, since they don't directly affect the money supply, but they can lead to price increases indirectly. For instance, changes in the international trust in a currency due to issues such as a failing state can of course lead to massive distrust in that state and their currency. Also, energy resources such as oil, which are necessary for an economy to function because it must be used to transport goods. So if the cost of oil goes up, the cost to move goods goes up, which tends to correlate to a general price increase of said goods being transported. And yes, war. War disrupts supply chains and also tends to encourage large amounts of government spending and aid packages, thus driving prices up. Now on to the more important question, what's driving the current inflation spike in the United States? Or in other words, how do we know that this claim of inflation being the fault of the Russo-Ukrainian war is a complete BS misdirection? Well, tracking data from 2021, government spending for the year was $6.82 trillion. That's a very big problem because Trump already had a year of high spending in 2020 to deal with the COVID pandemic. The correct move from Biden in 2021 would be to dial down the spending. Instead, his administration somehow managed to spend even more and with less to show for it. They also told outrageous lies about this, such as how trillions of dollars of government spending paid for by printing more money would somehow magically reduce inflation. But President Biden believes his spending plans will actually reduce inflation. Even though he's planning trillions of dollars of spending, much of which could come through newly printed money. Moody's today, when our Wall Street firm, not some liberal think tank, said if we pass the other two things I'm trying to get done, we will in fact reduce inflation. Reduce inflation. Reduce inflation. Because we're going to be providing good opportunities and jobs for people who in fact are going to be reinvesting that money back in all the things we're talking about. Driving down prices, not raising prices. Again, when you know the primary cause of inflation is more money chasing the same goods, you realize just how completely insane it was for him to say that. And much of the spending was total garbage. Billions of dollars on diversity and equity programs that are based on misguided understandings of sociology. Billions of dollars for Green New Deal style subsidies. Billions of dollars to try and build a completely unnecessary state-operated broadband internet system. Hmm, I wonder what that could be for. At least with Trump, we all got Trump bucks. It's not exactly great either. 
but this time the spending went to just random crap really that will not help most citizens in any meaningful way and potentially cause more harm than good. Also, the consumer price index for urban consumers was up 7.5% for 2021. This was largely due to state mishandling of the COVID pandemic. This line tracks the rise and fall of inflation. Any decent economist already saw that some CPIU increase was coming from the 2020 spending and economic issues of the pandemic. And so then the state brilliantly decided that we needed even more spending for more pet projects that wouldn't actually go anywhere. Also there's gas. Gas driven by rising oil prices has gone up 51%. This has a lot of reasons, but worthy of note is that the Biden admin banned oil and gas leasing on public land, put existing permits for oil projects on review, and shut down projects like Keystone. What Biden is doing here is basically a European-style authoritarian take on oil and emissions. So naturally, people in the oil industry start making decisions that are more conservative due to state intervention, which of course hurts supply and demand of oil. And here is where some propaganda efforts come in. If you actually try and search for why gas is rising so fast in the USA, you will get garbage mainstream articles explaining how it's totally not the state or Biden's fault, but the fault of the economy starting back up. Ah yes, people are hitting the road again, so the demand for gas is up. It's totally not the fault of these misguided policies that disincentivize oil production for the fact oil production hasn't kept up with the demand. If you couldn't guess, that last line was sarcasm. And let's just completely ignore the fact that this wasn't a problem between 2017 and 2019 before COVID was a thing. Or even worse, they tried to take a page from President Ford's book from the 1970s and blame the companies for raising their prices. You gotta love CNN, proving once again that they are just a bunch of paid DNC shills. Everything I have just mentioned are some of the worst inflation numbers we have seen in decades. And it's pretty obvious too. I'm sure just about everyone watching this video has noticed, the price of everything seems to have gone up, a lot more than it usually does. You don't even need to look at this data these days to know inflation is real. Simply go to the store and look at the shelves and it's quite apparent. All this misdirection seems to be a common tactic when it comes to state incompetence. They introduce legislation and regulations that have significant financial impacts on an industry. Said industry and its investors make decisions because of those regulations that result in increased prices. And then the state blames the increase in price on the industry. And then of course our useless and biased media repeats this state propaganda without question. This is, in a nutshell, how the grift works. For another good example of this grift in action, let's look at PolitiFact and their claim that it's not true to blame Biden. The reasoning that it's pants on fire to blame the Biden admin for these oil spikes is based first on a pedantic evaluation of some viral Facebook post numbers, which hilariously enough the current numbers are actually worse than the original post now, so it's safe to say that their evaluation completely missed the mark, and because the trend in rising oil prices started on November 9th, 2020, before he took office. Hmm, let's put our thinking caps on for a moment and strain our minds towards the nirvana known as having a triple-digit IQ score. What happened on November 9th? Oh, that's right, it's around where it became apparent that Biden was president-elect. And then after a brief period from January 20th to February 2nd, the following year, the price suddenly started skyrocketing further. Hmm, I wonder what happened. Oh yeah, during that period, Joe Biden slined a slew of executive orders reversing many of Trump's immigration and fiscal policies. Among these included an order to put, according to Forbes, an indefinite pause on new oil and natural gas leases on public lands, among other regulations hostile to the oil industry's operations. You see, savvy business leaders do not just sit around and wait until policies that are likely to impact their industry cause them to lose money. The wise make their choices based on future projections. This obviously includes taking real-world events such as upcoming trade deals, politics, and other potential legal barriers into account for their projections. So it doesn't matter that oil and gas leases, which were applied for before Biden got into office, were approved. What matters is how the decisions made by the administration will affect the future, which obviously is going to affect affect the industry's decisions even before the policies take place. And obviously the prospect of an incoming Washington administration that is openly hostile to an industry is going to have a profound effect on said choices of any competent business owner or trade partner in that industry. 
And when said administration actually follows through and starts passing said orders, you better believe they will move quickly to ensure they can still turn a profit. This is very similar to the reason why the stock market fell for a night and then suddenly boomed after Trump was elected in 2016. Trump didn't technically do anything, However, it was investor decisions. Investors pulled out of decisions that they made because they thought Hillary was going to win, as they had made their investments based on future projections of what impact a Hillary administration would have on the market. And then, of course, they readjusted based on what they thought would be future projections of a Trump administration after he pulled the upset. This is a simple investment pattern that anyone is capable of understanding. Again, good business leaders do not wait to lose money. They make their decisions based on what is likely to happen. For PolitiFact to label this as pants it on fire, they are either smoking some very good weed, knowingly pushing partisan propaganda, or they do not understand how basic business and investment strategy works. Now, I'm not saying it's entirely 100% Biden's fault for these price hikes. He obviously can't directly control the decisions that that business leaders and investors in the oil industry make, but to push this idea that the White House restricting an industry will have no effect on that industry's financial decisions is batshit crazy pseudo-economics. The fact that Biden himself is clueless does not help. You said earlier, Americans are feeling the squeeze of inflation uh, Oil prices have, have been at about a seven-year high recently. Well, look, uh, as you know, Ken, um, the inflation has everything to do with the supply chain. And uh, I think what you're seeing is that we've been able to make progress on speeding up the access to materials. Uh, for, for example, one-third of the, of the uh, uh, increase in cost of living is the cost of automobiles. And I think there's ways in which we can be of some value added in terms of the price of gas, natural gas and the like, to take the burden off the European countries that uh, are now totally dependent on, on Russia. But it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be very hard. But I think that we have to deal with, for example, like I said, you have a circumstance this is completely incorrect. As I mentioned earlier, supply chain issues are correlated to inflation, but are not a direct cause of it, nor do they meet the definition of inflation. Rather, inflation comes from too much money, chasing too few goods, velocity, and printing too much of the currency. So the issue we are seeing is from the state creating money we don't have to chase garbage woke projects we don't need, leading to there being a greater supply of money in an economy that is still trying to recover its goods and service production levels to pre-COVID-19 values. Of course, this irresponsible spending is going to cause inflation, and that the White House does doesn't seem to understand this basic fact is deeply concerning. Now remember, just about everything I just talked about is all coming from data from 2021 before Russia invaded Ukraine. So we know that these financial problems were brewing under the surface before this military conflict actually exploded into the mess we have now. And with multiple governments around the world, especially Washington DC, showing no signs of reversing their poor fiscal policies, it didn't take a genius to know that inflation would be continuing into 2022. Instead of acknowledging these problems, Washington would rather point fingers. So this all begs the question then, how much of an impact will the Russo-Ukraine war have on the USA and to some extent global inflation? Well, the answer is, annoyingly, some. Russia's invasion of Ukraine will certainly not be the primary cause of inflation and upcoming financial problems, but it will indeed make things worse. Cutting Russia off from the world financially through sanctions and whatnot will not only hurt Russia, but also indirectly affects the bottom line of anyone who does business with Russia and anyone who does business with someone who does business with Russia, and so on and so forth. Economists are actually predicting double-digit declines for Russian currency. So this will have some noticeable global effect as the world has decided to wage an economic war against Putin instead of just dropping bombs on him. This may seem noble at first until you realize that it's going to bring civilians throughout the world into greater economic hardship. While of course the political elite of course have little to worry about since they have enough money that it doesn't matter. Today, the average gas price in America hit an all-time record high of over four dollars per gallon. Okay, that stings, but a clean conscience is worth a buck or two. I'm willing to pay. It's important. Right. It's important. I'm willing to pay $4 a gallon. Hell, I'll pay $15 a gallon because I drive a Tesla. Russia is a major oil export source, and cutting that off is obviously going to jack the price more than it already has. 
And Biden's response to this seems to be, once again, blaming the companies for raising prices rather than respecting the supply and demand curve. There is also the fact that many countries, including the US, are sending billions of dollars in aid to Ukraine on top of trillions of dollars of more spending already in the works, all the while supply chains have still not recovered from lockdown, meaning even more money chasing the same goods, or in some cases, chasing fewer goods. And that's what makes this particular grift of blaming the Russo-Ukrainian war for inflation so effective, because it's not entirely 100% untrue. Rather, it's a stereotypical example of a half-truth. I call this the finger-pointing style of propaganda. When there are multiple causes of a problem, it's easy for someone to point to a minor cause and say, it's that guy's fault, even if that guy is only responsible for maybe 10% of the problem. This half-truth can be exploited to play the blame game to maximum political effect. I fully expect partisan media to try and make the bogus claim that the economy would have, by some mystic force, recovered if not for the Russo-Ukrainian war. Don't be surprised if we see this particular brand of propaganda spin heavily ramped up in upcoming U US midterms. The basic point I am making in this video is that all of these economic trends started before the Ukraine invasion and the causes of those trends have not been addressed in any meaningful capacity by the current US administration. So when you see these clowns try to prop up their Putin boogeyman and blame the majority of increased inflation and general trugging along of the economy on Ma Russia, you can safely tell your friends that it's a load of bullshit. Because I fully expect this to be the talking point by the current administration as a defense in said upcoming elections, and I figured the best way to refute this grift is to call it out in its early stages. The media will tell you that the inflation is the fault of the war. They will then cite so-called cherry-picked experts claiming that the economy would have recovered already if not for the war, and they will provide zero verifiable evidence for this claim outside of said experts say appeal to authority. This is also why I decided to get this video out before another thing I am working on, which is episode 4 of my BreadTuber series that will be focused on Hassan Abi. And I still plan to release said BreadTuber episode on Hassan sometime this month. I thought about whether to finish this video first or Hassan Abi, and I decided to do this video first because this issue on the Ukraine war and inflation is kind of important. While Hassan's episode will almost certainly be more entertaining to watch than this video, I feel that issues affecting the economy and people's immediate livelihoods comes first. Especially since after watching roughly 20 hours of his content, I have reached the conclusion that no intelligent person over the age of 25 could possibly take him seriously anyway. Anyways. So when you see the state pointing fingers like this and misdirecting blame instead of actually putting plans in to fix the problem, it's unfortunately a pretty big red flag that said problems are not getting fixed anytime soon. So while I am not a financial advisor, I will just say this. Be wise with your money over the next year because this trend unfortunately isn't ending anytime soon. Russia is acting as the perfect scapegoat, and this allows Washington DC to get away with their continued bad spending habits, mishandling of the economy, and just in general, really poor decisions. And they can fully get away with it by just shoving cherry-picked experts in our faces, selling cherry-picked facts, designed to deflect blame of these problems away from the current administration, while the problems remain unresolved. I could be wrong on this, I would like to be wrong on this, but I'm almost certainly not wrong on this. So thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to share, sub, tip, like, and all that stuff. Till next time.